All right, so in this section, we are going to talk about the approaches to hypothesis testing. So the first approach to hypothesis testing is to calculate the Z value and compare it to the critical value. The second approach is to calculate the sample mean and compare it to the critical um, value mean. And then um, the third approach is to compute the P value. Okay, all right. Now, let's start with the first approach. But then let's try and understand the meaning of a one tail test and a two tail test. All right. So, for instance, if a null hypothesis says that the average is equal to 50, and the alternative says that the average is not equal to 50, Remember our discussions or confidence interval. We do confidence interval because we sampled and we don't have the entire population. So once you sample, remember, it is better to say, oh, I'm confident that the thing will lie within this range. That is why we do confidence interval, okay? So now this figure of 50, Let's assume that it's confidence interval, when you construct confidence interval for this point estimate, let's assume the confidence interval will be from 30, let's say 50 plus or minus, um, let's say the Z value of 1.96 and the standard error of 10. All right, so when you do this, you are going to get 50 minus 19.6 and then 50 plus 19.6. So this is going to give us 30.4 up until 69.6, all right? So this will be the confidence interval on the diagram. So the 50 is here. Then we can allow up to 30.4 and then 69.6, okay? we can allow up to 30.4 and then 69.6. That means that we are confident that it must lie within this range. That means it, it, if it goes above this range, we will reject it, okay? So this is a two-tailed test. Now, if I set a hypothesis like the mean is greater than 50 as my now, that means the alternative is that the mean will be less than or equal to what, 50, all right? So if I want to draw this on a diagram, let's assume 50 is here. Let's assume 50 is here, okay? Now, ideally, the now says it must be more than 50, ideally, then now says this thing must be more than 50, okay? But let's listen to this carefully. But when we are constructing our confidence interval, because of sampling error, we will allow for a little less than. Let me take it again. We expect that this thing should be 50 and above. That means from here going, okay? But then because of sampling error, we allow for a little less. So that if you don't even get 50 and above and you get something like maybe 49, it's acceptable because of sampling error. So we allow for a little less, all right? A little less than 50. Now, the fact that we are allowing for a little less than 50 doesn't mean that we, sh we should allow even up to zero, no, all right? So we can allow for a little less, maybe up to, let's say, um, uh, maybe up to 30. So anything less than 30, it means that we will reject because we have done our best. Even though we are expecting 50 and above, because of sampling error, we give a margin of error of even up to 30. Because ideally, we are expecting 50 and above. But because of sampling error, we may not get above 50, all right? That means that we will allow for a little less than 50 because of sampling error. But then there must be a critical point. We have to stop. We have to stop that, okay? 
So then we can allow that, okay, even though we are expecting 50 and above, even if we get below 50 up until 30, we are okay because of sampling error, because sampling error occurs as a result of the fact that the sample is not equal to the population. So even though your hypothesis is saying that you want 50 and above, we must give a little room for error. That's why we allow a little less than 50, all right? And when this happens, it means it is a one-tail test, okay? So anytime your null hypothesis is equal to, that means that we will allow for a little more than 50, like this, um, like here. When it is equal to, we will allow for a little more than the 50 up until here. Then we will allow for a little less than 50 up until here, all right? That makes it two-tail test. But when your null hypothesis is that the mean is greater than 50, it means that we, if you have a one-tail test like this, or when we say your mean is less than 50, it means that when we draw like this, and let's say here is 50, we are expecting less than 50, all right? But because of sampling error, we will allow a little more than 50. So above that allowance we've made, we will reject it. And this is also one tail, all right? So two tail occurs when we have equal to sign the null hypothesis. One tail occurs when we have greater than or less than in the null hypothesis, all right? Okay. So that was what I was trying to explain. When we have the mean greater than C, all right, when we have the mean greater than C, as we can see here, when we have the mean greater than C, it means that if here is C, we expect that this point should happen, everything here, greater than C. But we allow for a little less, all right? We are, oh, sorry, if here is um, point C, sorry, if here is point C, okay, if here is point C, let me clean this. If here is point C, we are looking for greater than C. So our attention should be that the thing should be here, all this region. But because of sampling error, we allow for a little less than C up until this critical value. So anything below this there, we have done our best. We will reject it, all right? And so that is why here is the rejection region, all right? Then the same happens to this one also, okay? So if you don't understand, just replay the video. I'm sure you get it. Sometimes at first instance, it may seem confusing, but once you replay and go over, you may you get it. Okay. Now, one tail test for a population hypothesis about the mean when standard deviation is known. So remember that when standard deviation is standard population standard deviation is known, we can easily compute our Z, okay, not T. When we know the population standard deviation, we compute Z score, not T score, all right? Okay, so the steps are specify the population parameter of interest, formulate the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, specify the desired significance level, construct the rejection region, compute the test statistic, reach a decision, and draw a conclusion regarding the null hypothesis. Let's look at this example. Recently, Research physicians have developed a knee replacement surgery process they believe will reduce the average patient's recovery time. The hospital will not recommend the new procedure unless there is substantial evidence to suggest that it is better than the existing procedure. The current mean recovery rate for a standard procedure, the word is standard, that means it's a status quo, right? The current mean recovery rate for a standard procedure is 142 days, right? The standard is 142 days with a standard deviation of 15 days, okay? So the question is saying that research physicians have developed a knee replacement. And the question says that they will not recommend it unless there is substantial evidence that it is better than the existing procedure. 
Now the existing procedure is 142 days. So then if the research you are going to do is that they want the new procedure to be better than the standard procedure, what it means is that the new procedure must be less than 142 days. Because when the standard procedure says that when they do it for you, your recovery time is 142 days. Okay, but they are doing a research on a new procedure and they expect that the new procedure will be better than the existing procedure. What does it mean? What it means is that for the new procedure, the parents must recover faster than 142 days. And that is the research outcome they want to have. So in other words, when you are stating the research hypothesis, it means that the average waiting time must be less than 142 days. The average recovery time, all right? Must be less than 142 days. And then now that we state based on this alternative is that it must be greater than or equal to 142. So remember that the status quo or the standard is always in the now. That is why we, we, we bring it here. Then the research hypothesis or what they expect to get out of their research is that the, the mean should be less than 142 days. So that is why we stated the research hypothesis in the alternative, all right? Now, what level are we testing? So in every question, they will give you the significant level we are testing. So in this question, the significant level that is being tested is 5% significant level. Okay, which also means 95% confidence level. Which also means that if it is, of course, this is one tilt. This is one tilt. So this means that if it is one tilt, 95% confidence level will go with a Z value of 1.645. 1.645, 1.645, okay? And let me show you something. The now says that, the now hypothesis says that the mean should be greater than or, or equal to 142. So we are looking for this as our expectation in terms of the now, not the alternative, all right? But we'll allow for a little less, okay, because we are looking for the null, the null is that it should be greater than 142, or equal to 142, sorry. But then we allow for a little less than 142, which is this part here. So the little less we have allowed for, once it goes below that, we will what? Reject, okay? So even though an alpha level of 5% goes with, a Z value of 1.645 in terms of 